So here's the declination axis. As you can see, there's no metal shavings, no filings, no, uh, there's just the grease that's there. There's occasional, like, anything that looks like off color or something in the, in there, it's, there's no damage, it's just the grease that's in there, that's in the gears. There's no broken teeth, there's no, uh, the only thing I saw was maybe right there, but I think that that's just a spot of grease. That's all there is. And then on the um, on the worm gear here, it's very interesting to look at um, and get the lighting right. Yeah, that's better. So there's um, that's not damage right there. That's just where I touch the grease with a towel to check. It's not a flat spot or anything, it's just grease or lack thereof. There's no there's no bent teeth, there's nothing damaged on this gear. So the declination axis looks pretty good. Now continue and do the rest of the things it says to do. I was gonna re-grease this gear, but I'm not going to. Um, the grease is still wet, it looks clean there's no dirt no debris no metal shavings um, so I'm gonna leave well enough alone and call the declin declination axis good so I'm looking at the RA gear now um, looking at it for damage and I must say um, up in the majority part of the gear uh, when the tube is up here it is uh it doesn't look like there's any damage at all um there's just the grease until we get uh here now the don't be thrown off because the tube is pointed down this is just at the limit of the ra uh to the right so this would be with the normally the telescope would be pointing up and you'd be tracking to the west towards sunset and so at this limit Remember the gear is going to be centered and at this limit there is a little bit of uh, a little bit of metal fleck in the teeth there. Um, I'm going to just wipe it with a uh, with a shop rag and then I'm going to examine uh, the worm and see about it and uh, see if there's any issues there. Now to be fair, uh, I have exercised this mount already, and so it's possible that the if there were any other burrs or anything else on here, um, that exercising it might have worked those out. Uh, and this is still not a star test, so I can't be 100% sure. But in exercising it, it went to the slew limits, and so it probably didn't go anywhere past this uh, stage because that's where I have my slew limit set and that's about where the worm would stop it would be right here and then anything past that would be really kind of past my slew limit uh, with the counterweights pointed up so anything residual looks like it's where the counterweights are pointed up uh, and that's probably where it did not exercise the mount and so it did not run the worm gear over this little short section and then you can see where the grease picks up where it hasn't been uh, going uh, the grease is completely clean there and then there's a little spot there where there's a little bit of metal fleck and then starting there it looks like uh, probably where it was exercised the teeth look clean and then I'll look at the worm just to be sure and then I will do a star test uh, to see if there was any if there's any residual damage. So after I've put everything back together, I'm just telling them out to home. And it should find home. I marked it with these uh, glowy tapes and then cut the tape. Uh, it's just uh, one piece of tape there with a cut on it. And that kind of tells me it finds home successfully. Sure looks like it. Okay. He gave me a ding, 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 ding. 
Um, so now I'm going to put it at ludicrous speed and slew. Quiet. Alright, so that's plus RA. Let's go back minus RA. Nice and quiet. Sounds pretty normal. I will go all the way down here. And then it's it stopped on its own. I'm gonna run it through this area a little bit because that's where the it showed maybe a little bit of potential metal chips. I'm just gonna run it through here a few times. And here she comes. Alright, and that reached software limit. Go back the other way. I need to clean my optics. Note to self, don't clean your optics. I think they look alright. Alright, everything is actually humming along pretty nicely on the declination axis. Got, uh, um, looking pretty good. I'm gonna have to test it under the stars, of course, to make sure that the star test comes out good. But after checking for metal shavings or any broken teeth, I don't see that kind of damage at all. Yay. I might have escaped. Let's hope for the best. Well, I've had a clear night to do some tracking. And I think I've been a lucky boy. Let me show you my results. So if I open this tracking log, um, I took about 20 minutes of data. And you can see the curve there. And if I show that, it's uh, plus uh, 3.1 arc seconds, minus 1.7 arc seconds. Five, what is that? 4.85. So, um and if you look at the data it's pretty clear data it's not there's not a lot of junk going on there so um i was taking about a half a second samples at a star that was in the right position just following the manual so then if you if i open up i, I applied that peck then to my uh, mount i, I saved save the curve to mount and then uh, then applied it. If I if I show you the what the peck error curve looks like, that's what the peck error curve looked like. Then then I save that to my mount. So uh, that's what it's going to do internal to the mount based on the uh, home position or the the index of the RA. So then if I go back to the data, there's the data again. And then if I open, I took another tracking log, uh, this last one here. And then if I do a fit for that data, um, what it shows is this is the, the actual pet curve that I used. And then this is the second one. And this is after PEC had been applied. So without PEC applied, um, and just doing a tracking log, it was uh, 3.1 arc seconds peak uh, on the positive. And then after applying the pet curve, it went down to 1.4 arc seconds. And uh, you can see the curve there. Uh, the larger curve is the raw data, and the smaller curve is with the pec applied. So that's the uh, that's actually really all right with me. <laughs> that is really all right. Um, I had um, the original uh, pet curve was similar to that. Um, I think after I applied the pet curve that I took whenever I first installed the mount, I believe that I got it to about plus or minus one arc second. So you know it's it's pretty close considering seeing or any other variations or whatever, uh, especially considering I crashed my mount. <laughs> so I think I've been a lucky boy, and I think I've. Uh, very happy to report after I, I exercised the mount a bit to run it in and to get the gears run in again. Um, I rebalanced the mount. I made sure it was all you know squared away. 
I inspected the uh, RA and deck worm blocks and the worm ring gear that's inside the mount and looked for any damage. Uh, it didn't look like there was anything big to, to, to mess with it. The greasing looks, uh, the, the lubrication looked fine. And so, um, and then running the star test, it looks like there's no big hickeys, no big damage. The, the, the star test looks pretty good. So uh, just to show again, this is, this is the raw data from the star test after fitting it. So that looks very nice and smooth and periodic. And um, the amplitude is 4.8 and I believe uh, seven is the spec. So uh, I'm still inside the original spec for the Mighty. Um, and it looks like it's going to perform okay. So I'm a happy boy. Um, thank you to all of you that that watched the original video on the channel because I got a lot of <laughs> I got a lot of sympathy and I appreciate that very much. Um, the um, there we go, looking out, to see the moon. Um, the Mighty is a very good mount, and I'm very proud to be an owner of it very happy with the performance so far so um, hopefully I'll keep producing good photos and uh, everybody out there have hope you have clear skies and uh, enjoy your winter peace out